Welcome to worship this Sunday morning, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Throughout this Easter season, we continue to explore what Jesus' resurrection means for us and what it means to be Easter people. Shasta County endorses the statewide stay-at-home order, and so we at St. James have been following these directives. Our service has been recorded from our homes and offices, which is a good reminder that no spaces are holier than others. As today's reading from 1 Peter says, Christians are a royal priesthood and God's own people, gathered together through space and time. Feel free to follow along with today's worship using the electronic bulletin. Click on the link in the description below. And now, we gather to celebrate that Christ is risen. Let us worship the risen Lord together. We begin with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue with the gathering song.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 through 10. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, this which also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Please join me in reading Psalm 31 responsively. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, 
the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carl. I'm a construction worker. I'm here today because today's readings talk about building. And I'm a builder. Jesus promised that in God's house there are many rooms. He was saying that there is room for all of us in God's house. That must be a really big house. To learn about the kinds of people who have a place in God's house, I'm here on the street in the big city to talk to some people who are passing by. Oh good, here comes someone now. Excuse me, excuse me sir, would you be willing to stop and talk to me for a moment? Well, I guess so. I'm very busy making sure our city is safe from fires. But right now, there aren't any to fight, so I have a minute. What do you need? I'm talking to these people today about God's house, and how there are many, many rooms in God's house. Jesus is preparing a place for us there. There is room for everybody. So I want to ask you, what will your room look like in God's house? My room in God's house? Well, it would certainly be painted red, my favorite color. And it would have pictures of snowy mountains and lakes with lots of green trees and plants. Places where there isn't much risk that a fire will start. In God's house, I wouldn't have to worry about protecting people from fire. But for now, here on Earth, I like that there is a place for me. An important job I get to do to serve God by serving others. I keep my community safe. Wow, that's great. Thanks so much for talking to me. You're welcome. Wow, what a great first interview. He was right. Everyone has a special place in God's house. But God's house isn't just in heaven. God created the world, so the world is God's too. God created each one of us to have special abilities and special friendships. There is no one quite like you, and God wants you to use what makes you special to serve the world. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to stop and talk with me? We just learned that there are many rooms in God's house, so there is room for everyone. But God's house isn't just in heaven, where we'll all get to go someday. There is a place for every person in our world, too, because God made our world, and God made each of us with special abilities to help each other. What is the special place that you fit into? Oh, well, that's easy. I'm a doctor. God gave me the ability to help people who are sick or hurt. But right now, I'm on my way to the hospital to help some people, so I can't stay. Sorry. That was great. Jesus is preparing a special room in heaven for that doctor for sure. But in the meantime, there is a special place for him right now to be where he can help people who are sick or hurt. And it seems like he really enjoys doing that and feels proud that he can help people. Do you have any special abilities that you are proud of? Uh-oh! Did I just hear you ask what special abilities I have that I'm proud of? Well, yes, but... I was actually asking these people here- Well, I am definitely the person to answer that for you. You see, I am quite gifted in many ways. I win the archery competition every year. And of course, I'm quite charming, and my looks can't be beat. Archery competition? Dashing looks? Um, are you supposed to be Robin Hood or something? Supposed to be? Of course I'm Robin Hood, look at me! Yes, I see. It's just that I'm not used to encountering medieval bandits in the middle of a busy city street, is all. Oh, yes. We aren't quite in the right setting here, are we? Well, I can take care of that. Ta-da! Sherwood Forest. How? What? When? Yes, yes. Everyone is always surprised when they realize they are in the presence of the great Robin Hood in the beautiful setting of his homeland. But fear not, I am here to help you. I rob from the rich and give to the poor. Well, yes, I suppose you are. And Robin Hood, you're the perfect person to finish my interviews with. I've been asking people what their rooms will look like in God's house. Because we all know that there is a place for everyone there and that Jesus is preparing it for us. 
But in the meantime, we also have a special place here on Earth and a special job from God that only we can do. Ah, yes. In God's house, I'm sure my room will be as green and lush as my beloved forest. Plenty of rope swings and targets for me to practice my archery. Thanks so much for talking with me, Robin. It's been an honor meeting you. Yes, yes, it is an honor meeting me. But I have much to do, and my adoring fans can't wait to see me at the next archery competition. Ta-ta for now! Cool! That really was Robin Hood. Say, does anybody know how to get back to the city from here? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If for some reason you ever find yourself in northern Pennsylvania or south-central New York State, take some time for a leisurely drive down New York State Route 206. It's a typical country road, running through various hamlets and forests, crossing the Susquehanna and Delaware rivers, skirting the Catskill Mountains, unhurriedly meandering through the state. Eventually, you will find yourself at the intersection of 206 and Gavette Road. Well, to be honest, you wouldn't really find yourself there. You'd probably drive right past. This intersection isn't the sort of place people would think to stop. There is not really anything there at all. And yet, this intersection is the location of a very strange story. In 1909, a man named Otto G. Lindbergh formed the General Drafting Corporation. General Drafting came to be known for its roadmaps. He secured a contract with the American Automobile Association in 1911, and later became the exclusive publisher of maps for the Esso and Exxon oil and gas company. In 1937, they produced a map of New York State. Being a publisher of maps is a tricky business. You take on a tremendous amount of work to create a map, but then you run the risk of copycats stealing that work from right under your nose or right off your page. After all, you can't copyright where roads or towns or counties are. So if you do a great job, if your map accurately reflects reality, then how could you prove that somebody else stole your map? One way to discourage this unsavory business practice is to add what are called fictitious entries. These are fake places that wouldn't appear on geographical surveys or censuses. They were designed to entrap copycats and prove they stole your work. For this reason, sometimes they're called copyright traps. And if that sounds too technical, sometimes people call them paper towns because they exist only on paper and not in reality. To protect their work, Otto G. Lindbergh and his assistant, Ernest Alpers, put an additional town on the map. They scrambled their initials into A-G-L-O-E and they created the town of Aglo. They placed it at the intersection of 206 and Gavette Road. So, when people drive down that state road, they drive right through the paper town of Aglo, New York. Aglo, by design, does not exist. There's a path you can take to get there, but there is no real arrival point. In a sense, it's a way without a destination. I think this is a good analogy for some popular Christian thought today. Many Christians nowadays view the faith as first and foremost a way to get into heaven or avoid hell. The path, generally speaking, is this. Formally become a Christian, believe in God, go to church some Sundays, and try your best to be a good person, just to put your thumb on the scale a little bit, just in case. It's a sad fact of modern Christianity that, for some, the entire goal of being a Christian is to get to heaven. 
Therefore, do those things I just listed. Travel that path, and you'll arrive at your destination. Except, that's not how it works. That list of things doesn't get us where we want to go. Doing good things doesn't get us there. Going to church doesn't get us there. Even, this might sound surprising, even believing certain things about God doesn't get us there. I'll explain that one later. We think we know where we're going. We think we're driving down Route 206. But the town we're looking for never materializes. If this is the way, there is no destination. The salvation we reach for always remains outside our grasp. The salvation many Christians proclaim is simply a paper town. Several decades after the General Drafting Company produced their map of New York State with the town of Aglo, Rand McNally, another publisher of maps, printed a map of New York State that also showed the town of Aglo at the corner of 206 and Gavette. General Drafting was sure they had caught Rand McNally in a pretty obvious case of copyright theft, but Rand McNally had a good defense. They claimed that Aglo actually existed. At least, it did according to the county clerk's office. In the 1950s, somebody had traveled to that intersection with the old General Drafting map. There was nothing there, so they opened a store, and they called it the Aglo General Store. At its height, Aglo featured the store, a gas station, and two houses. Somehow, the town of Aglo had come into being. Now, I admit that this is where our first analogy breaks down, but a second one now rises up in its place. It's true that we cannot make a destination for ourselves. If we try to follow some generally assumed way to salvation, we won't find anything. But today, Jesus has something different to say. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. In other words, when there was absolutely nothing for us, Jesus has brought something into being, just for us, just for you. No matter what's happened in the past, what will happen in the future, what's happening right now, this dwelling place is for you, no strings attached. Nothing you could possibly do will get you there. Only Jesus gets you there. Now, when I said earlier that believing won't get us there, you might say, but Jesus says, believe in God, believe also in me. See, it's right there. But Jesus is talking about a different kind of believing. Today, we think of believing as agreeing with a certain set of ideas giving our approval to a proposition about who God is. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. He's not talking about accepting a statement of faith. He's talking about trust. He says, trust God and trust me. Talking about belief nowadays is an action we take. Jesus is talking about placing things in his hands. Jesus is actually talking about the absence of action. You don't have to do it, because he does it. He doesn't even make you walk the path. When we say, show me the way, Jesus says, I am the way. Only he can take us to himself. Left on our own, Jesus is not a destination to which we can travel. Instead, Jesus is the source and the goal and the way all in one. This is precisely why Jesus gave himself for the sake of the world. When we think we see nothing, it turns out that Jesus has seen it the entire time, and he bears us up, and he carries us along. And so he says, there's no need for white knuckles. Let go. I got this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Trust God. Trust me. The town of Aglo faded off the map in the 1990s. The general store is gone, and the intersection is basically empty space. Copyright issues prevent me from showing you pictures here, but a quick internet search will give you plenty of images of what used to be Aglo. The U.S. Geographical Survey removed the town from its register in the 90s. All that remains now is a sign marking the spot of the old general store. And yet, in a real way, Aglo lives on. People are drawn to the story of this strange little place, and from time to time people travel to this intersection so that they can, in a sense, be a part of its odd history. The author John Green made Aglo a setting for his book Paper Towns. Cartographers tell and retell the story of this plot of land between the real towns of Rockland and Beaverkill. In some sense, they live in the echoes of Aglo, New York. The place where we are going, the place to which Jesus will take us, the dwelling place he is preparing for us, obviously does not exist on earth. That will be a place that is beyond human description or human imagination. We could never express what that will be like, just as much as a child in the womb could not conceive of what it's like after birth. And yet, in a very real way, we are living in the echoes of Jesus' words. Where I am, there you will be also. And that gives us a role to play right now. We certainly can't make our own salvation, but we can live in the reality of God's salvation. As Peter says in his letter this morning, Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Priests are people who stand before God on behalf of other people, and before other people on behalf of God. As God's chosen royal priesthood, that's 1 Peter 2, 9, we are called to reveal who Jesus is to a world who sorely needs him, and to do this work not simply with words, but with deeds. God has put us in this place at this time so that we can use our gifts and our creativity to work out how to show others that, despite all appearances, Jesus is here and active and mighty and always reaching out, saying, Trust God. Trust me. For showing us that we cannot make our way to God. For showing us that Jesus is the way and the source and the goal. And for calling us to be a holy priesthood right now. Thanks be to God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, St. James Lutheran. Thank you so much for this opportunity to update you about LSS of Northern California. My name is Stephanie Cazenza. I'm the Director of Development at LSS. Our philosophy is that stable housing leads to stable lives. With you at our side, we're able to help 3,800 individuals every day in six Northern California counties to stay safely housed and rebuild their lives after being homeless. We couldn't do this work without you. And as a result, that's 3,800 fewer people living on the streets or in shelters. During this pandemic, we're having to do our work differently. We have to uh, work remotely. We're using technology to communicate with our clients on a daily basis, so phone, text, and email. We do have to interact directly with clients, and we're wearing protective gear. A lot of the protective masks that we have have been donated. They've been hand-sewn by churches and individuals, and then extras we're sharing with clients and their children. We still need more. Uh, we're also packaging food from the food bank and delivering it to the clients, so again, that keeps them safely housed. Restaurants have donated meals. So we've been able to provide some extra special uh, opportunities, you know, nutrition opportunities for our clients. We're sourcing paper and cleaning products for our clients. And we're doing everything we can to help keep them safely housed because that's where we all need to be right now is staying at home. Our clients notice these extra touches and they're telling us that. They feel safe and they feel like somebody cares. We are growing. We've added programs this year. We'll be adding more next year. Uh, we've redesigned our youth programs uh, to improve their educational outcomes as well as their uh, long-term um, opportunities for a living wage job. We'd love to tell you more about what we're doing there. Check your mail and your email because over the summer we'll be doing a series of virtual coffees with our CEO, Carol Roberts, to tell you more about that and our other plans for the future. How else can you help LSS? Donations are always appreciated. You can give online safely and securely. Visit our website, lssnorcal.org. On our website, you'll also find information about our programs, client success stories. You can read our newsletter, Grace at Work, or sign up to receive it. You can also read past issues and other reports that we put on our website. Sometimes we even have client art available for sale if you're interested in that. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can always call us, 925-825-1060, extension 15. That's my office, but we can get you to others in there. So again, thank you so much for your interest and for your, your prayers, your good deeds, and your gifts on our behalf. Stay safe, and God bless. Bye-bye. Let us pray for the well-being of all, for God's creation, for all who suffer, for all who are in need. Shepherd Lord, we your sheep at times wax fearful, forgetting your invitation to rely upon your grace. 
as we pass through our present time of international crisis, remind us that we are not alone, but that you are always and everywhere with us. Bless our efforts to overcome fearfulness, loneliness, economic trials, and physical illness. Preserve us in mind, body, and spirit. Cause us to see times of trial as always an invitation to your promises of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant wisdom, Lord, to the political leaders of the world. Cause them to see the nations of the world as but neighbors called to the common good. Show our own legislators and elected leaders the wise decisions they must choose. Cast aside from them political ambitions and restore to them the trust placed upon them for the welfare of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Creator God, you have given to us a world capable of sustenance for all your people. Where we have exploited it, forgive us. Where we have selfishly allocated its resources, restore to us unity, generosity, and community. Grace our leaders with wisdom to reverse the harm we have inflicted on your creation and make us all dedicate ourselves to using your creation for the sustenance of all of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, gracious Father, for the homeless in our midst. Keep from them the virus that plagues us. Give to us the resources to protect all the most vulnerable among us even as you protected, healed, and restored the poor and the desperate in the ministry of your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, we pray for our community of believers around the world. Keep your Church faithful to your word and promise in Jesus Christ. Strengthen them to stand against evil powers of oppression, discrimination, and racism. Bless all pastors and servant ministers in their callings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also, Lord, for the welfare of this congregation. Bless our deacons in their unique ministry. Bless our pastor and all our staff as they adjust to the changed responsibilities of their callings. Open the hearts of your people to support financially the ministry of your church. Grant to us maturity of faith and faithfulness of service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, Heavenly Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the gift of God's word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call to us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O Lord, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. 
faithful to your word, O God. Draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Father's house, everything will be brand new. In my Father's house, there is only peace and love. In my Father's house, I'll prepare a place for us. Let your hearts find comfort. prepare to exit this holy space of worship, I want to remind you that our Facebook and YouTube pages are very active. You do not have to have a Facebook or YouTube account to access these pages. They are also directly accessible on our website, www.stjame.com.
S-C-A dot org. I invite you to stop by regularly for news, daily devotions, and other information. Our office is currently closed to the public. Our staff is working from home often, but we remain available to you by phone and email. Even as we're limited in physical presence, the ministry of our church continues. Our staff is hard at work, and the contributions we've budgeted for organizations and our synod are still being made. We ask for your continuing prayers and financial support so that we may continue to be the hands and voice of Jesus in our world. Thank you to all our worship leaders this morning, and thank you to our Christian Education Coordinator, Katie Swartz, for producing, editing, and uploading this video. And now, we close this morning's worship together. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.